fuck it. <laughs> what is this? Got sponsored? Huh? No, it's what God. They chalk! Oh, now you do it this week. <laughs> what is this? It's a drink. I, obviously, I've never seen Adrenaline Shock. Smart energy. They just got an ad from us right now. Adrenaline Shock energy. Hit <laughs> us up. Shot. Uh, you said what? Hit them up. Hold on. You said you hit them up? No, I'm trying to do like a pose on the page. Okay, good luck with that. Jobber Nation. <sighs> Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, oh, whatever time. It's going to be good morning. Collada listens to the morning. Cut. Oh, good. Shout out to essential workers. First, I see you out there. First thing the power in couple, the, the drug dealer and the nurses. Wait, who's I the see you. Drug dealers and nurses. The power couple, the unity. Oh, okay. Yeah. I can I can see that. What? That goes. What did he say? He said drug dealers and nurses. Oh. I can, I can. And podcasters. Yeah, facts. Because <laughs> I got to post this at 6 30 in the morning. You okay. Know. Oh, shout out to the podcast who's out there grinding, well, who's out there pandemic, think... putting out consistent episodes. Shout out to y'all, you know, shout out to those wrestling girls, you know, shout out to Weed and Wrestling. Shout out to 2020 Podcast. Well, I 2020, love you, 2020 Nate. Vision. <laughs> What? Shout out to, is it Hardy Podcast? Yeah, Hardy. Yeah. Hardy Podcast. Yo, shout out to Stephanie, you know, that's my uh, homegirl right there. My fellow Another, Virgo. Th- yo. The Virgo women out there in the pocket game, y'all are killing it. Shout out to the fam, the Jabba Tears Network. Everybody. You know, shout out to Jabba Tears South. I see you out there, y'all. I see you in my tan of black. I see y'all all there down there. Rest y'all know your Get name because the I'm TikTok terrible. Game I see crazy. the TikTok game is serious. You talk about wrestling. What's what you do? You put your product out there. Wrestlers out there is doing it for the family. Entertainers. entertainers at the end of the day because these are workers. If you need some good quality southern wrestlers, <laughs> shout out to Jabba to yourself. Zuka's you wrestling for oh, um, Sunday. Zuka King. Yeah, Zuka, Zuka King. Zuka, Zuka, Zuka King. Shout out to Zuka. Happy, happy birthday belated to you. birthday. Yeah, happy to you, King. I see Zuka. you out there celebrating, king it up, you know. Oh, uh, to talk about kings, Master P got his own series. Oh, my. Yo, he got the I can't even order it. No, it's it's on UncleP'sCereal.com. Yeah, yeah, I went there. It's not on there yet? Nah, I went to the menu. I didn't see it. It's, I he literally probably saw didn't pop it. it up yet. Yo, I can't wait to... Ooh. It's Hootie Hoo. Yo, Master P, holla at us, B. I don't care. Yo, just get us some free cereal. Matter of fact, I'll buy it. I'll put it on the show. Yo, I'm buying me a couple of boxes. This is what I want to do. Any black creators out there making it something, yo, send us it. We advertise on the show. You know, shout out to all my black ent- entrepreneurs out there. We hustling out there. This is the next Harlem Renaissance. 2021, 2020, we out uh, there. The 20s is the decade of black excellence. I proclaim it Ooh, right bars. now. Black excellence at its finest. This is our decade, y'all. We bars. got this out here. Don't let no corona, no virus. Ha <laughs> ha. Decade of black excellence. Watch. So, when shout outs to um, Katie and Mikey from the Raw Zone that had us on this past um, back to back days. I feel like I've been recording all week long. But um, yeah. shout-outs to them. Uh, when they asked who does the best promo, we really should have probably said you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> probably said the second. I, in my mind, I was going to say you. But then when you broke it down the way you yeah, did, yeah, yeah. I was like, all right, I'll let him be. So um, those that did not catch us live on their um, show, whether it was Tuesday night or last night, um, you can um, go on to their YouTube page, subscribe, and watch us. Um, do talk about actually we had one night where we didn't talk about wrestling yeah, facts. and then we had one night where we did talk about wrestling mm-hmm. so it was very interesting and really cool but thanks once again to Katie and Mikey of the Raw Zone for having us on um, and what else um, is going on in the wonderful world um, before we do jump into some wrestling it's been pretty quiet in wrestling I feel like but um, this Sunday the reunion is happening yep it's like six months in the minking. Yep. Uh, <laughs> what was the last pay per view we had in March? <sighs> no, remember. it was February. I don't remember. Whatever. Well, regardless of the fact, we're back at Legends this Sunday. Uh, make sure we at lit twenty five percent capacity. Uh, limited so- spots are left. Um, so make sure to RSVP on Eventbrite, um, or you can um, hit us up. On the Job of TS podcast Instagram or email, uh, but once again, you'll catch the entire network. Um, so us, cats and dogs, 
um, your sports um, talk of champions. I so like I said on on, the, on their show the other night, I was like, I, I'm excited to meet Stan. You're looking Stan the man. Stan the man. Stan the man. Like you know, the I'm skin mad Donna, hyped to meet him. Listen, shout, uh, happy birthday to the, uh, Antonio Carter. I see you out there. You know the king Angelo, of light skin. Angelo Carter. Oh, sorry. D'Angelo Carter. Angelo no. Carter. Oh, uh, Angelo Carter. My fault. My, My man fault. said you know, D'Angelo. He's, like he's probably the leaders of leaders of the light skinness. You know, I see him out there the grinding. Ca- La Capitaine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> El Captain of light skinness. <laughs> you know, I see, yo, I saw him. I told time. him he comes Sunday. I get oh, him a I shot. Oh, I can't so. wait. You know, ha- you know, happy birthday to Marquise Marquis. You know. Celebrating. You know. You know, you know, you know, my Almost, Libra brother right there. Yeah, your Libra brother. You know, shout out to Prolific. You know, Prolific as a as as a unit. You know, some people say that, you know, brothers and brothers don't need each other in wrestling. But when brothers and brothers come together, ha ha, I'm telling you, Create the magic. decade of black excellence and everything we do. I proclaim it. Bars. Decade of black excellence. Um, so as I was saying, yeah, so this Sunday we're at um Legends, we're back. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. It's going to be a movie. I feel like at literally every person I've talked to is super excited about Sunday. And it's not even just so much the people. I mean, of course, NXT TakeOver. We'll get into predictions um, towards the end of the show. But NXT TakeOver is always going to deliver. But just the fact that we're all able to come together, um, you know, after all that we've been quarantined and, and far, far away from each other. So it's really good to just have the wrestling community um, back together. So that'll be Sunday. And then... Um, Hopefully, if all goes well, um, we can look into the future in November because November has full Gosh. gear. AEW, um, we also have, once again, we're coming up to Survivor Series time of the year, which is mm-hmm. my favorite time of the year. Um, I can't wait. You know, And Brand, then also the end of fear. October, uh, we probably won't do it, but the end of October is Bound for Glory Impact, um, where they're going to induct Ken Shamrock into the Hall mm-hmm. of Fame, uh, again, which I'm really excited about. Again, I don't know what... What do you do at WWE? You don't deserve it because that man... Yo, like, wait, counselors. you said what? Like, I don't know what he did in during WWE for him not, not to be mentioned. He didn't kill no one's wife or nothing like that. He did none of that. So I don't understand why. But I think for certain people, I mean, once, damn, we should have asked him. He hosted the party. Yo, we never asked him. Damn. But that's because he wasn't talking to nobody. Listen, when I told him there would be no Brock if there was no him, he spoke to me. He spoke to you for two seconds. I was standing right next to you. That's he, he said, more than enough. He said, thank you. He has more than enough. <laughs> you know, like he had a conversation with you. Don't, don't, try, to, don't try to gas it. You try definitely try to, to gas just, it. Like, yo, we it. had a full conversation. I was saying his, by his wife. Fuck it. No, no you said, I would you, never. You said, it wasn't for you, blah, blah, blah. And he goes, thank you. He's, he's and said, he took a picture. He's and he, a, yeah, he took a picture of it. And that was it. And that was it. It was like a meet and greet. I had a more. We did a meet and greet with him. For free. <laughs> For free. That's what happened. It was a meet and greet with Ken Shamrock. But it was great, though. I appreciated it. But um, but certain people, for the most part, they they actually tell WWE, like, I don't want to be involved. Like, yeah, at all. Yeah. So you have certain wrestlers that'll be like, nah, I'm good. You want to open this? What? Because your brother want to try it. Go ahead. Take some dogs. So that, <laughs> that's why he, why he asking. He wants so. Um, but yeah, so once again, we're getting back into the group. Adrenaline shock. Let's see how much. Which flavor is it? Aki Berry. You would get Aki Berry. Don't OD pour the fuck. It's not yours. No, you I, said I, some. I, I wanted to hear the noise. <laughs> you did the fizzle? <laughs> the fizzle on the, on the thing. Well, go ahead. But I want to see how it tastes then. It tastes horrible. Don't say that. Hold on. Let's try the adrenaline shock live on the Java Tears podcast. <laughs> Whoa, what a rush. No, stop it. Damn. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, man, this yeah. Aki Berry got You're me. Doing ah. the most. I can't. I'm well, energized. Now, now he's now he got to try it. Wait, was it really good, though? Why'd you dig? You took a What a rush. <laughs> the Aki Berry, bro. Oh, what a rush. What a rush. Oh, the oh, adrenaline God. shock Ooh. energy drink. I feel like Ultimate Warrior. Oh, like, yeah. I feel like we just you guys just cut the illest commercial from 1996. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. I've been watching all y'all know I've been watching old Raws and, and the Nitro. Yo, and yo, shit. yo those, those cheesy commercials were the best, man. I, I watched them. Untold, which on, one? Um, uh, the, for Edge and um, oh, and Cena? And Cena. I haven't watched it yet, but that I want to really watch good. it. There's really honestly, they're one of the best feuds in that decade. Yeah, yeah. And well, people don't really give. They're legends. Well, yes, but once again, it's one of those things. Like when you were in it, you didn't really, you know, t- you didn't really value it. Like when it was going on, but looking back at it now, I'm like, 
their their feud definitely put both of them on a different I think level. Both of them. It did. Because typically yeah. certain feuds you may have one higher than the other. But I think Edge and Cena, because they were both kind of at, I don't want to say peak, but they both were at a high time in their careers. And for them to clash the way that they did. And it all started from Edge cashing in mm-hmm. money in the bank um, at New Year's Resolution. And Edge has so. his, his own little run in Hollywood, too. It wasn't as successful as Cena, but it's still some level of success. He was on the show Vikings. He had a guest star in the That Flash. show was actually not that bad. I never actually, watched it, so I can't rejudge it. But like, him, I see a few episodes. him just being on multiple shows, that shows you that people trust him. So the fact that he's even doing that, to me, yo, that's dope. Some people may not see it as, oh, you're going to do John Cena level. Bro, I don't see you on television. Hmm. I don't see you out there, people searching for you. I don't see you on screen. You What, what are you doing? Can you what you doing? Google what, me. What are you doing? People can't even Google your name. People don't know who you are. <laughs> not even doing nothing. You oh, know, Lord. what y'all do? What y'all do? Y'all complain about girls and stuff like that. Y'all complain about life. you at the end of the day, stop complaining. Be about that. Be about that smoke. Be be like the street prophets. Definitely don't think everybody is is with the smoke. So they're not. Um, what else is what else is going on? Real quick, what's what's something new this week? Um, whether it's something you watched or you did. Um, what's something new? Um, dang, what did I watch? I didn't watch nothing really. Um, I definitely remember, you know brushing on my wrestling. Um, definitely, just appreciate wrestling as a whole. Um, I didn't watch. Did I watch anything? Oh, I've been watching Girlfriends. How's that been? I, you know, what? I'm gonna wait until like winter. I think I'm gonna wait oh, until it gets. Like, like we got bride, we got sister, sister. Yeah. Girlfriends and the Parkers and the game. Come on, man. Come on. But like we spoke about before, the ending, like towards the last few seasons of the game, it just was like it's not worth it. Trash. It wasn't worth it. Trash. Come on, B. Trash. It wasn't worth it. Come on, like. And they tried. Yeah, but then again, they took away the element that made the show. They didn't have no football in it no more. That's that's what made it trash. Yeah. Come on, like Malik. Come on, that storyline. My story. My Pookie. Come yeah. on, the Pookie beef. Come on, come, classic. Classic. I'm still out mad there. to this day that a nigga name was Pooch Hall. <laughs> like the fuck. <laughs> but uh, all right, girlfriend. So how's it been so far? It's been good. You know, it's been good. It's been good. It's been good. It's been good. Okay. So Wilkins, what's one thing this week um, you've either watched or experienced or? Nah, it's been pretty pretty regular. and do nothing different. No, nothing this week. Not nothing new added. So this morning, well, in real time this morning, but when you guys listen to this, it'll be two days before. Um, so on Netflix. I had, you know, because certain shows will pop up or certain, like, documentaries will pop up and you'll just be, like, putting it to the side. You'll be like, oh, no, I ain't going to watch it. I ain't going to watch it. Yo, I finally, wa- this morning, because I could not sleep last night at all, I finally watched American Murderer. Like, How was that? yo, it was wild because the mom, like, documented, like, their entire, like, lives. And then it almost felt like, remember um, if you ever watched um, Paranormal Activity? Oh, yeah. That's my, yeah it gave me the beginning of it gave me Paranormal Activity vibes because it was more or less like you had people checking out the house. Like her friend had dropped her off. I'm not going to spoil it all because it actually is a really good documentary. It's just wild because like he did it and he tried to lie about it and they caught him and it was just like. Like, he took a whole... That's the one thing I never understand. Whether it was this documentary or even fucking Maury, you go on to do a polygraph test. It's going to catch you lying. That's the point of Mm -hmm. it. And you still lie. Yeah. Like, he flat out lied during the polygraph test. And the lady came back with the officer and they was just like, so we know you know that the polygraph test came out like you you lied about everything Mm -hmm. so it's now you want to tell us what really happened and then he tried to make up this story about how the mom killed the girls because it was it was the wife and the two daughters Mm -hmm. and it was just like listen listen if you're gonna kill the wife but you're gonna kill two little girls that didn't make no sense that was just senseless so i got stories similar to that you know somebody that killed somebody yeah what you know a murderer yeah what so I used to work with him, right? He was always off. He was a man of pride of a man. So so he got fired, whatever. So I used to always see him at my church all the time. Wait, hold on. He used to work for the post office too? Yeah. 
So it's really he really went postal. Yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, to work, to work, to, to, to work. Like, like I be telling people to, to work where I work I at, you have to have a certain a level of craziness. All right, there's trouble. but murder at level. The, but they always talk about post office people, people going literally go crazy postal. There. Like you know, like this is one guy that who walks around I and quacking like this, quack, quack. Wait, quack. hold on a minute. Yeah. Is so, yeah. somebody at your job? Is someone at your job that walks around yes. the halls yes. of the post office <laughs> <laughs> and he quacks? Yes. And there's some lady that <laughs> like, she just went so seen out of like she didn't bathe. And what she didn't bathe, she was just stinky. And because of her day, she had the whole woman's locker room because she had bed bugs. What? Yeah. So, nevertheless, though, so he's worked there. So, so wait, tell, 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 tell. <laughs> I got so, mad stories. So, Nobody oh, ever believes me. But, but go ahead with the. But so go ahead with the murderer so because clearly cool, that was wild. Cool. So, happily, he was cool with me. I don't know. I'm cool with murderers. Like this, like my friends range from they still love Yu-Gi-Oh, collect Pokemon cards too. I put a gun in your mouth. I don't know. Range. You have a friend that puts a gun in someone's mouth? Yes. Okay. A couple of them rapped about it. But that's a whole other situation. Clearly. So, um, so then, yeah. So next thing you know, it was on the news, too. So, like, I wake up one, one time. I saw on Facebook. You know, I saw his name popped up. You know, like, no, no, I'm saying his name is Mike Sykes. So his name popped up. I said, that. I said yo, that's, that's Mike Sykes. I worked with him. I read it. So comes to find out the baby mother he was dealing with, right? She had a kid already. Right, named Miracle. So, I guess I guess they broke up. So the morning of, he took them all out for breakfast. He fed them before he killed them. Yes, yes, yes. So then, <gasps> what? Yeah, he fed them, and then he went back to the crib, stabbed the mother. He stabbed his two kids and stabbed Miracle. You know what this and, reminds me of? And He's, only person- Miracle's the door. No, no, no. Um, the, um, um, the daughter. Mer- the daughter. That wasn't his. Oh, oh. So then she stabbed all three kids. Two of them died, but Miracle survived. And the mother died too. That's so then, Watts, so then, so then, so listen to this. He went on the run, and then people that knew him was hitting me up like, "Do you know when Mike?" I was like, "I don't know." So now he he finally turned himself, and he's doing consecutive life serve. I mean, um, um, time. So he he's in jail right now getting. I got the connection. I got it. Damn. So you know a murderer. Yeah. You know niggas that'll put guns in people's mouths. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. So I guess today we got questions. So, today. but but hold we on. We have questions. But hold on yeah. for a quick second though. Was she was she breaking up with him? No, she broke up with him. So how do you? All right. So quick question. How do you deal with breakups? Um. Simply, I understand that you have some kind of involvement in there. So you have to like you take the good with the bad and understand that yo. You have to take accountability to what you did. And a woman will not just leave you. Like, a good woman will not just leave you for a reason. So you have to understand she was fed up, tired, and and then obviously you was not fulfilling your part as a man. Meaning that a woman want to feel comfortable with you. Are you right? Am I right? <laughs> Am I right? Listen. You're so, a woman, right? No, 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 yes. no, 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 no. Correct me if I'm wrong. However, for you, comma, no, 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 no. For you to be safe with a man, you need to know that his feelings are stable enough. Well, not only his feelings, like I need him to be stable. Like, exactly. I need, exactly. But everybody, every female's. But I'm not <laughs> asking, but in First general, all, this but is, in general, this is no, your no, fault. No, 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 no. You did that. it's okay for a man to be a man, Absolutely. but you have to understand that, yo, at some point, you have to demonstrate some kind of masculinity at the end of the day. Now, I'm talking about no toxic, I'm talking about real masculinity. It's like, you know what? A man want to feel, a woman want to feel secure. Like, I know when anything goes wrong, he won't go off the deep, um, deep end. He could able to talk out my, his feelings to me so that we could work it out together. Because I'm That's here valid. not to bring you down, but bring you up. But it's so much me saying all this positivity if you don't believe it. It takes you to believe what everyone is saying that's seeing you. Mm-hmm. No one else. 
And that's what I learned from being in church. Like people say that love God, love God, but then but then they don't teach you to love yourself. How can you love someone else if you don't love yourself? That's a very simple thing. And, and that's what I realized. And that. that's why like when people complain about, oh, you know, there's little girls in anyway who don't like me. Da, 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 da. Shut up. Oh, listen, all I ask is how I get over breakups. Uh, you, you open Pandora's box. Yeah. Good luck with that. It's just like, it's just Listen, like you in that. our field, in our field, what I know is a lot of a lot of people I know is they always complain about not finding somebody like what they exactly like. Listen, in relationships, you need somebody who accepts you for you. you. Didn't. I, I just I just want to know how you And how get over breakups. Break I understand that yo, it may hurt, but I, I embrace it. But I understand that I fuck somebody on. else. That's how you get over a breakup. <laughs> you get on top of somebody else and you fuck. But you deal with it. You saying that you know what? You it's don't toxic. go on their page. No, I no no no. Well, I'm toxic. I'm gonna go toxic. on your page. I don't. I, I'm go, no, 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 no. I don't go on your page. I don't follow you. I don't pick up your calls. Oh no! Calls. Definitely, I'm about following you. I don't I, do that. No, no, hold on. That's too obvious. No, 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 no. They gotta watch your success. No, no, no. That's no, no. what I said. So no. that's the whole. Okay, so everybody been going back and forth, like telling me, like I've had conversations, like yo. You should block like when you no. stop dealing with somebody. You know, no. block them. I'm nah. like, no, nah. nah. I want them to see the blow up. It, like, it, it fuck depends. Uh-huh. It depends. It depends. If it's a bad breakup, yes, I'm Even blocking. It's a good one. No, it's no, no, no. One. If it's a bad breakup, you're getting blocked. Especially if it's like my ex, I'm blocking you. Nah, that bitch gotta go. We have to understand. She's a smart of Satan. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. But like, she you know, like you had to block her. No, no. Than you. But the thing about it, I blocked her. And she still, and she still ways. found a way to get to me. <laughs> that's the point. That's, that's toxic. As that's, fuck. That's, no, 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 she no. still found a way. Those skills are not of um, that's those skills are not of earth. <laughs> that skills of the devil. That's but like wild. I said before, I'll block somebody. No, I'll unfollow somebody. There's no need to see you constantly on my timeline. Thank you. That's it. I don't want to see you on my timeline. Thank you. I don't want to see you on my timeline. I'll go to your page the first week to see. Of oh, oh, you moved on already? Facts. Oh, this is the nigga that was hosting your DM, Facts. huh? Give me motivation. <laughs> exactly. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, oh, Ooh. JB, that, that, that you said, oh, it's just a friend. Ooh. Oh, now, oh, now he's in a picture with you, with your arm around mm. you. Mm. Oh, well, okay. Because so you have hair. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That hair's not gonna last forever. The exactly. Ball, forever shining. Because <laughs> he got a good ass hairline <laughs> and he got waves. Okay, oh, I see boy. where this is going. <laughs> But you know what? I'm gonna watch for like about but two weeks. But you know what? Shout exactly. out to like Instagram and Facebook because you can mute people. That's what I do. I mute people. No, I unfollow. And yeah, you know I what? When you unfollow, especially when they break up with you, they feel some type of way. Mm. All right, all right. Mental game. The mental game. But Psychological see, but, warfare. But see, but then on the flip side, if you don't see certain people do things for a reaction, so when you don't react, that fucks with them too. No, 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 no. You, you don't expect the reaction right away. You don't expect the reaction nah, right away. people do. No, no, no. That's why you're not playing the, the mind game. <laughs> Time to play the game. Trips. Exactly. Trips. So when Your you favorite. do that, yeah. when you do that, you laugh at them. it fucks with their head. Oh, he, oh, oh wow, he unfollowed me? Yeah. Oh, shit, he unblocked me? And then they're going to get the text. Why did you unblock me? Or why did you unfollow me? Because I don't want you. <laughs> well, I personally said, hey, big head. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> get out my DMs. So why you text me oh, for, for, for me, hey, milk done. Whoa. Hey, big head. I forgot who somebody texted me the other day. I was like, hello. <laughs> what do you want? But um what else? Before we jump into some wrestling. Oh yeah, so American American Murder on Netflix, wow. I think it's a must watch because it was really good. I thought it was because you like the first half of it was like her point of view. That's fine, but not for him to take my place. Are you out your mind? Such a good this job. Time, mm-hmm. this there's questions on Facebook. Like, what questions? Like for example, talking? someone said, "Talk about the lack of di- diversity among wrestling journalism. The possibilities from Sunday main event Sunday. I right, could talk about that. The possi- the lack of um, minority journalists in wrestling was the question. Yeah. Um. Talk about the mm-hmm. lack of what? What we want to talk about today? Talk about you know what's so crazy though? I feel like when we started the podcast, we was like, we didn't. I don't think subconsciously thought of it, but like then kind of like networking. There's mad exactly. people. There is of color that exactly. do wrestling podcasts. But <laughs> no, there is. But like a lot of us among us don't promote each other. A lot of them but have hold bad on. marketing teams. Hold, hold on, hold on. Let's let, let's let, let's rewind. Let's rewind. There are a lot of. Black podcasts that talk about wrestling. There is a lot. There's there's a there's a lot, 
but there's a whole lot more exactly. of ones that don't that are Hispanic or black. Correct. Yeah. And then to go on a bigger level, I'm talking about people who talk about wrestling on a bigger platform. There, there are very few. And and there, oh, okay. As far as the biggest problem, they always mix with someone else. Shout outs to Tommy and New Jack for their podcast too. Cheap plug. Yeah, Tommy yeah, yeah. just like that. It's usually a white guy I'm and a pr- black guy. No, but no, Tom, Tommy's, Tommy's a black, black guy. Tommy's oh, black. Oh, 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 oh. No, but but I'm just saying that's not with a wrestler. So true. Th- so okay, true. let's let's rewind. Oh shit! My bad. I'll be fine. Too I'll be much. Fine. All right, I'm sorry, guys. Okay, so. When somebody's asking about the journal, jur- journalistic grab that. things. No, that's what I gotta get dropped. The hand sanitizer. Oh, so then grab something dry, please. So, um, so when people are talking about that, um, it's you don't have that many, because on huge platforms. Not on a huge platform, no. It, it's very on a smaller platform, and I think we're all on that rat race of getting there. Um, thank you. There are certain people that I. <laughs> <laughs> that that have gotten up to like what is it sports skeezy? Yeah, you know I'll I'll not the biggest fans of them, but I will also I'll thank respect you. that because it's not many many of us that look like that that are on, on there. Yeah, but to answer the question, the reason why there's not that many is because it's just what we always talk about. Black people who like wrestling don't like talking about talking about they like wrestling. Yeah, they, because they, they feel ashamed they, of it. I'm mad shameful. You get made fun of. And yeah, like yeah, it's all about comfortability. It's that comfortability, and, and but you there aren't that many <sighs> journalistic people that are Hispanic or black. Yeah. On and there's one dude he works for. He he writes for the Forbes. Mm-hmm. He's black. Um, oh, I know exactly what you're talking he, about. Yeah, he's a he's a, he's a Nigerian he's so, cat because he, he used to write for Bleacher too. Yeah. Um, also, you have that guy Greg. Yeah. He does a show with um Peter, Peter Rosenberg. Rosenberg. Yeah. Um. Real life cat, shout out to him. Re- but real life cat doesn't really do he doesn't, um, do, really do wrestling. Yeah, he does like he, um He'll he does touch on t- it. he'll touch on it, but he doesn't do like a complete show on wrestling. He used to, he used to. But I'm talking about like now, Recently. like but but in, ge- but in general, you don't see that that prevalent within with, within the journalistic community. But then again, that's just nerd culture in general. Nerd, but yeah. But the thing about it, there's tons of black people in nerd culture, and a lot of them don't have the personality to really get it out there, or they start it but not really consistent. Yep, not really consistent. But there are more. I I see more black people in in video game culture. Yes, in music. M- more black people in um, anime culture. Yeah. Um, comic culture. Yeah. Like I'll see them on 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 a, on their bigger bigger platforms yeah. talking about th- their respective um. Art form or subject, whatever subject you want to matter, you want to talk about. But when it comes to wrestling, it is far in between because if you think about it, I, I, I well, people can say what they want to say about um, Sam Roberts and and um, Peter Rosenberg. Mm-hmm. They started from they started from nothing and, yeah. and, and working for WWE. Yeah, but you don't see a lot of black journalism, journal wrestling journalists working for WWE or AEW. Yeah. So when somebody's mentioned that. Yes, there's a lot of black podcasts, but there's not a lot of black people on that bigger stage talking about wrestling. Yeah, so it's not really like the it's just it's just the whole culture behind it. Like we just don't support it. We we don't support we don't support each other. Um, I don't think uh, I think it's changing now. Yeah, I think we it, it's gonna change, and you're gonna see you're go, you're gonna see a change in it, but. It's it's kind of sad because you're like you're damn when you think about it because you don't really think about things like that. Yeah, when, that question is is, is a good it's question. A legit question. Yeah, and guess what? A lot of us don't support each other. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, like like for example, like let's say that they'll see someone like me is a true story. They will bypass me to see my numbers, but yeah, they'll go straight to my brother just because like he has more of the pop on the more of the popular page, and then they'll just bypass both of us. But yeah, they don't understand oh, you, that. My shit is private, so you like, bypass me. I'll be looking time. like, I don't care. isn't it better to just get all three of our person by a, person, a personal thing one time? Or they may not like something, they quickly just say, oh, we're a bunch of coons. I don't want to listen to y'all no more. Well, 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 that's, well, that's culture in general. People don't like um, different opinions. They don't. Jabari asks, so what can we do to help? So what can what can change? Support um, each other. Like, actually support and, and respect our views. And stop going by that old black code at... 
if you don't speak, if you speak bad about, uh, you critique another black person, you're not putting them down, you're saying that I have a critique of this action, I'm not cr- cr- critiquing you as a person. I think also to um, doing more things together, I think exactly. definitely creates that unity that I think those looking outside in, they have that we don't sometimes. So like where, for instance, we've had numerous people come on the show and every time they, oh, first thing they say is thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's yeah. like the first thing that we always say is like, no, thank you. Yeah. Because you take the time to come. You have, you brought your opinion to the table. And I think more of an openness and willingness to come together and do things together definitely will help set that bar a little higher. I mean, granted, everybody kind of wants their own separate success and that's fine. But I do think there are times where in a sense, the coalition can come together and do things, whether it's once or twice a year, and have a panel and do things like that. Like, for instance, I was really excited. Um, WrestleMania weekend that would have been down in Tampa. Um, there's a pos- There's two guys that do a podcast. I forgot the name of it. But they were a part of the GCW, like, collective, like, schedule. Yeah. And they host, like, wrestling, like, wrestlers in color um, type of panel. Yeah. And I was going to go and meet the guys and network with them. So I think definitely one of the big ways to kind of get over that hump is networking and, you know, taking not only taking a risk on yourself, but taking a risk on others and and banding together. Because once again, there's there's strength in numbers. And I think I think for us always in that mindset of the of the minority, we forget that um, when we really band together, even if they label us the minority, we really are the majority. And and guess what? The same exact way. Y'all would share one of your artists that you would never meet, like a Tory Lane, make the salad, et cetera, et cetera. Yo, repost your favorite podcast. Or like, yo, this is the moment I like this. People do do that. Shout out to all the fans out there who do repost our, um, um, our stuff to, to refer to our pages to other people. But do for other podcasters too. But I think, I think I'm think i in certain um in certain group chats where yeah. um I'm, I'm in a group chat with a couple of podcasts um Matt speaks wrestling through the table 2020 podcast and they all re- repost each other's stuff and everything yeah, that's how you do it that's that, how you get people on the, the, but um I think when it it's just you forget that podcasting in general is new yeah and it's probably the past two years it yeah, probably like it really hot. blown up and yeah. got hot so it's still a new place but to go back to the question it's gonna take some time. But it's like what you said, just us all supporting each other. That's it. Mm-hmm. And um, just getting ourselves oh, out Oh, another there. thing, too. No. None of that throwing, like, putting each other on front of you on social media. That's a dub for that. If you have issue another podcaster, another wrestler, all of that, yo, don't speak on it in public. Go privately. Because at the end of the day, people might see that coming in like, you see, there's never unity within this. If you show unity... At the end of the day, people may want to come into this because people just want to feel a place where they don't have to put they their business out be on front a, They want to feel like they're in a sanctuary. They want to feel, and I think that's one of the things that I've always loved about the viewing parties. Like even from when So Wilkins started it almost eight, nine years ago, like my first one, the first one he did, I was just like, yo, I, I'm in a safe zone. Like I don't have to be ashamed to like wrestling and, and not talk, and talk shit and, and say that this wrestler is whack because of X, Y, and Z. And that's my opinion. Like I think creating those environments of safety where your opinion is appreciated, you may not always agree. Cause trust me, we like, like I always say when someone is a, guests here and they have the opposite opinion than the rest of us i'm like it is rare that the three of us agree on something all together <laughs> but to create a space where your opinion is respected it doesn't have you don't have to agree to you can agree to disagree you don't always have to be on the same side but to respect each other's opinions and respect what each each other brings to the table because we all either separately here we all bring something different to the table which is why when we do come together we do for Megatron, like you used to Voltron. always say. Voltron, uh, sorry. Blacktron. Blacktron, there you go. So those are the type of things, like, when, you know, and just think about it, if it's more of a collective, or even when I used to do the panel, like the pre-show panel, or, or things like that, like, when we hey, have... Why doing that? Just because it's just logistically, it just was a lot. It was. <laughs> I mean, we'll make... We, 2021, never know. But mm. uh, but those are the opportunities, like, you know, i never forget when I did it with um Nate and... um. There's a bunch of us. 
It was and, Nate and, and um and from um from, and from the um behind the barricade. Yo, shout out to the behind the barricade. Please check them out on Sundays. Um, so when I did it with them, and then you know, and that was kind of like the first time you know I got to you know meet Nate and talk to Nate and yeah. and just vibe and, and understand you know like okay this is you know they're starting their own thing. Let's put them on. Let's exactly. do this and you know, things like, like that. My brother and one of their um, one of their you out here line. modeling. Yeah, doing and a t-shirt shit. line. You know, but shout but out to it's wrestling. But it's you know, but it's things like. Like that, right? So, but those shout the, out to eyeballs and head chokes. They did our shows many times. There are things like that that creates that type of unity and that type of bond. Where if it's like if if you have a resource, I can personally ask you like, yo, what do you think? What's your opinion? Because that was something I had to come into terms. Like people legit would just ask me because they're like, yo, I genuinely respect and enjoy your opinion. And yeah. I was just like, wait, what? Like, yeah. what are you talking about? Like, yeah. I just say what I want to say, and that's that. So. I think for us, um, as people of color, I think it's important that we come together um, more than anything, especially now that wrestling had hit that hard reset after the whole allegations and school shutting down and things like that. Like That hard reset was just a way for us to really kind of capitalize and, and take things to another level um, with the resources that we already have. Because once again- yeah, We got a lot of questions. We got, there are a lot of questions? Yeah. I don't mind answering questions today. Um, what's the question? That's actually not bad. Um, because I feel like this weekend wrestling was on. Uh, what are your thoughts about how fandom clogs up fans' viewing of wrestling? Um, actually, let's first define fandom. I think. Um, yeah, please define uh, smarks. Okay. Being a, be marking out. I think sometimes <laughs> I marked out for Jerry Lynn the other night. <laughs> um so this is something I wanna say, and I think I something I re- that really bothers me in pro in in, in wrestling mm-hmm. is gatekeeper. Yeah. I think we have the wrestling community has truly been like infected by Fake gatekeepers. No, like this is legit gatekeepers, like GKS, gatekeeper syndrome. Like, it is so bad at this point because we have so much wrestling Uh that people are such dickheads to people who don't like certain things. Yeah. Right. It's gotten really bad. I think that's what the person who asked this question is talking about where, for instance, you may not, not watch New Japan and a person be like, you can't have an opinion on wrestling. Yeah. Like, like you can't talk that's about actually it. actually false. Like, no, but that's how some people are. Correct. Because, yeah, I, I will be the first one to say I've never really truly connected to New Japan wrestling. Yeah, and then the fact never that- never really been my go-to Thank wrestling you. thing. But- However, it doesn't stop me from trying to or hearing or watching a match or two or being, you know, intrigued with a tournament or two or things like that. And when like I have something that I know, such as when I saw Moxley in, in there, I was like, ooh, I got to watch that. You know, when I saw L- Luke Gallows over there first time, I got to watch that. When AJ went over there, I got to watch it, you know? But that's but that's that's the thing is that you, you're just you're, you're dibbling and dabbling. It's, it's, a, it's a buffet. You're entitled to that. Yeah. But a lot of wrestling fans who act like gatekeepers, like, yo, you don't know enough, so you can't say anything. Or if you like WWE and you don't like AEW, something's wrong with you. And vice versa. Like, you or, get teased for, like, AEW. I'm looking like... But yeah, you get their, you get teased deal? for that. And it's like, wh- who says what I'm supposed to like? Thank you. You're ruining my fun. Thank you. Oh, I can't pronounce a Japanese guy's name. That means I don't, I'm not a real wrestling fan? You're not a wrestling fan. <laughs> like Look what he said. <laughs> but he <laughs> said that... Coquita. <laughs> you don't know. But, it, <laughs> but, um, little, but your dick is little. Wow. Uh, but okay. then but okay. then you have people who's like, all right, I just want to watch um NWA. That's fine. I just want to watch that online all week. That's yeah. that's my thing. I just want to watch fine, that. Yeah. Oh, you just only watch it now. I missed that on Tuesday. Um yeah. and, and it sucks. It sucks because it's this gatekeeper syndrome within the community where you're like, which goes back to what we talked about earlier, there's no unity. Like, oh, yes, you tell me about um, some independent wrestling. I may not want to fuck with it. But thank you for telling me. Yeah. And the fact that I didn't fuck with it doesn't mean I'm a bad person. 
Right. It's just that it's I didn't want to. Fu- I didn't want to fuck with it. It goes to so everyone's always going to say I hate Roman. I hate Roman. Blah 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 blah. My always thing is like, I've always said Roman just has never been my cup of tea. Like that's just my opinion. Like when we spoke with shout out to Joey Ace last week for coming um, on our show last week. It's all about when you connect to a certain particular wrestler and you connect to like when I spoke to Zuka on Sunday about Roman, he was like, "Yo." I felt that shit because it reminded me like when me and my cousin would fight and argue when we were kids and how we grew up. So automatically off rip, you you gonna be invested but into certain that. People, but like you're right, some people would be invested. But the one Correct. thing about it, what makes you upset, is the fact that people will complain about everything they complain about: lack of story in this, a lack of uh, the lack. Yeah, you're gonna of, like, nitpick. I mean, yeah, nitpick at, at the end of the day, we've always that's what we always, do. We've always said, and granted. We yeah. do, but we've always said, you know, not every. That's just in life in general. You're not always going to be happy with everything. Like you're certain not. people, certain people enjoy watching the twenty four seven title get the fed every week. That's their cup of Yo, tea. Yo, when fuck my fucking cup of tea, I was upset. Raw on the ground was on this week. That's your cup of tea. <laughs> and guess I was what? Tight. And guess what? It's a but. Rekman Bullet said it's a buffet. Every wrestling show has a different style of doing their buffet. For example, AEW, they have more of a greater buffet. They have different styles. You may get Japanese, that's the American food, the American food, like, then the breakdown of them be a southern type of, of, of style of food. WWE, they got the same type of food, but they're presenting more of a gentrified way. Some people like it that way, and that is okay. But Just it's, like indie wrestling, that's more your street vendors, that's more your pop-up shop. You get everything, get everything and everything, but a different presentation. That's okay, but but the thing about it, it's but that's how people are. Like, yeah, hu- 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 yeah, hu- people, humans are so, especially in this, in the the whole information age that we're in. We're and then we also have social media, so we can always talk about our opinions so easily, which is a yeah. beautiful thing because we, so we have a podcast. Yeah, but it's to a point where if your opinion is against mine. You're a fucked up person. Yeah, you, you shouldn't. Oh, you're a fraud. You're a fraud. Or if you don't talk about what I talk about every week, or this and this, you don't know what you're talking you, about. But then it's like we may not talk about New Japan every week. I've been watching it. I've been I've been slightly watching it and, and to keep my eye on it. Through the table talks about it. Go go to their podcast. Thank you. you, you that, that and that's the unity that we talked about. Um, who else talks about it? 2020 podcast will we'll, we'll, we'll talk about a little bit more than, than we yeah, do. I post head chokes. They I post in, I post oh, head yeah, chokes. They, another, another, they, they, they love it. They love it. it. So it's okay. But that lack of unity within the community is annoying. And that ruins the experience. Because it's like, I, I remember sometimes in, in, in our group page, it gets a little crazy. People will people will hit me like yo. I just wanted. I just said that I didn't like Cena. Why is everybody yelling at me? <laughs> and, and it bees like that. But you like that little bit of um. Sometimes you like that little static. You, you get that little static, Sometimes. but not to the point where you talk about somebody's moms. Right. Like not and that's when, when the, you get personal. And, and that's and, when the fandom. And when you uh, take yes. yeah, that's and when you mother, take shit personally. That's your mother's a hoe. You know. She's, you know. Like how did my mom and wrestling become? That's wild. She was sucking that's dick on Spice Channel back in the day. Wow, um, somebody asks, want to go to the next question? Yeah. yeah. Impact Wrestling, Victory Road, and RVD potentially leaving to go to... No, he left, but he's technically not signed. Potentially going to, to WWE. RVD better... No. 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 RVD is He barely of, wanted to work at Impact. Yeah. All right, like, RVD <laughs> is the type of legend where he could just get a couple of one-day contracts signed here... You know, he might go to New Japan. What is he doing? Bit. Yeah, like, RVD is chilling. He's like, I accomplished everything he needs to accomplish. RVD is well established. He's well, like, he's... Yeah. He's, he's a superstar. He's a legend, yeah. legend. Yeah. Low yes. key. Yeah. Like, low key. No, yeah. I agree because, like, I oh, like, like we've always spoken about, like, my beginning early days of wrestling was RVD. ECW. Yeah. So, like, it was him, Sabu, Taz, um, Sandman, Tommy Dreamer. Like, it was those. So, seeing RVD then... To now? To now? Yeah. So, RVD mm-hmm. is so special because when nobody was fucking him, fucking with him backstage, especially the higher ups, because there's stories about the higher ups like, nah, like, this guy can't be the, the face of the company. But Vince was like, nah, he's about to be the face of the company. But he kept messing up. And, and, and I'm going to get to that. Yes. Where 
They shot him to the moon. Gave him the gave him the world title and the ECW title. And then he gets in trouble with Sabu. He messed up <laughs> with, with some drug stuff, and then they had to take the title off him the next day. You know what it is? It was like the high value of drugs he had. If it was just he had an eighth, an eighth is something. Even back then, he had an eighth and a joint. They would have been like, yo, you know what? It, it just, is what no, it is. but it's just no, no, the let point. Me well, no, let me finish how that he got in trouble. He had other stuff in there because there have been times that back in the day in my youth, yeah, we in the whip, whatever, whatever. Next thing you know, we had the whole blunt rolled up, the joint. The guy was just like, nah, leave it there. I'm not looking for not that serious as weed. I'm looking for the harder drugs. So they had to have something harder than that. No, they definitely did because you're talking about is. Sabu and RVD. Exactly. Oh, definitely like, was, that's why I got like, in trouble. Was, I'm in love but with the, the thing about it, was real. He should have like, did better. He should have been a better example. That, that's, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. But the thing is, though, he still bounced back. He still kept his popularity because that's that's how amazing RVD is. And he went to TNA and killed it. Went to TNA and killed it. Like, the that's dude, why I'm surprised that they, I guess, in a sense, had a fallen out or he decided I, to stop. But, I mean, even for the last, like, few months on impact like he just don't look like he want to even be there his, but you also got, you also, you also got to think about his <laughs> oh, yeah. body's beat up yeah yeah but like bro he's in his 50s at this point probably but it's like bro like either you're gonna be on or you're gonna be off yeah like, but 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 the, but he said the money was good sometime when they throw that check at you you're like i'm so gonna take this bag speaking rvd probably do way better on the indies right now than going to WWE. like what what are you and kd4 is gonna be doing on what Take she a, can't be shaking ass on fucking you, USA Network. You, you know, you know what'd so, be dope. Like my fuck? brother said, do like a one day contract. Come in for the Royal Rumble, get that mega pop. But it's not gonna happen because it's not gonna be no fans. Never know. Um, never know. But get a pop or whatever. Come yeah. to Royal Rumble. Yeah. Maybe do a, get a little pop. Though. Maybe do a Mania match. Yeah. And go home. Put over some. Like think about it. Imagine him putting over. Mustafa Ali. Yeah, like do 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 a um a program with somebody yeah. short. I would have KD4 as part of my entrance. Exactly. Her coming out twerking with the yeah. gun. Yo. I promise you. Twerking around with the gun like that. That shit like, is not around. happening on TV. Thank you. Yes, it will. Yeah. You think on USA or Fox, they're gonna have this bitch shooting it's, Hold on, hold on. Money out it's, of us. In your face. Yeah. Now. Yeah, in your face. It's no longer PG era. It's the PG thirteen in your face yeah. WWE era. But have and you ever, what? what's and been in what? your face? Not a damn and thing. And guess what? Guess what? Shout out to shout out to Jabba Tier South for this thing. And <laughs> RVD, in your face. R V D is the type of talent where he could after Mania he put over somebody and then he could have other matches because because he can still go in the ring he is more valuable than a lot of wrestlers because he could still continue on and still put up other talent one strong year put him other talent get a few titles you know he's one of the greatest ic t- um, champions get a few run go to nxt maybe get the title put over young talent he will be there for i the definitely would, if, yeah. if there was an option i think nxt should be should NXT's be an something. option on the table yeah. but other and than that, where he's not in, like totally invested on like a story, because clear, the shit with him and Sammy, it could have been way better than how it ended. But he just looks so uninterested in wanting yeah. to wrestle, like wanting to even get on the top rope. I was like, bro, just don't even do it. I rather if you're gonna have acid, don't be on TV at all. Like, I please mean, save overall, us the drama. RVD is the type of person he'd be good. No, I mean always. I think he, he could be good. pop up a hog, like you know. But I do. I think band. he would make. I think he would make bands on the indie scenes versus. Oh, oh bro, it's, 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 it's RVD. Yeah, yeah. RVD. It's RVD. What other questions? Yeah. Is there anything before we get into a few topics and then we'll go into the season? Oh, right by now. the way, EC three versus Moose. Moose lit. Moose. It is, ladies and gentlemen, classic Hawksy man. I'm a huge EC three fan. I think he is the classic wrestler. <laughs> that knows how to talk, looks great. I don't know why he didn't work out in WWE, but it is what it is. He was but his, he, he did. I, I listened to the listen to Jericho's podcast strictly because of EC3. Yeah. But his promos online, perfect. They're not perfect. They're extraordinary. They are some of the best work I've ever seen a wrestler do. But he always was like on yeah. top of his game on imp- like. A but TNA the thing Impact about it, days. it's doing it online, posting them online, doing this stuff, and like Moose is doing such a good job. He's selling the fuck out of yeah, the entire where <laughs> he is the co-star. The star is EC3 and his story, 
But Moose is doing such a good job of being the co-star in this movie to, and, and to lead up to this He's match. And that's the good actor. thing. Like, and, such a good supporting actor. Something that, you know, shout out to the um shout out to LA Lakers for taking that W against the Heat is <laughs> what I took from that is, and I applied to wrestling, when everybody plays their role. Moose understands that my promise levels <laughs> is not as high as yours. But yeah, if I take the co-star Moose, role, fucking list, boy, doesn't you. matter though. If I take the co-star role, I get less lines, but able to learn from you. Each one teach one. That's why I be telling people, you forever the student, you forever the teacher. You forever in someone's classroom, you forever teach in a classroom. Once you understand that concept, you will always know your role in life. And Moose understands that. No, I think they're doing... A, that's what I say, Impact these days. That's why I was disappointed in RVD shit, because I was just like, bro, like Impact be... The lit. entire quarantine shit, yo, it's lit. been lit. Tasha and, Steele's over there. And, you yeah, know, shout oh out to Sis. Oh, my God. Shout, yo, Willie Mack, my son. Oh, what's that dude that he um he got the um the title from? Um, Was Willie Mack versus um Chris Bay. Chris Bay, Ace Andrew, shout out to them. You know, you got you got so much good guys. And people are calling Heath Slay like, yo, after my contract is done, can I go to, over there too? Yo, I don't care what anyone says. This is how you create a strong team behind you. And people need to shut up about, bring a dirty guys here, da 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 Just like this. When Brock went to UFC, he brought all wrestling fans to watch UFC. A lot, of, a lot of wrestling fans stayed and continued to watch it. Simple. Just like if a superstar goes to a certain team, like, like, like LeBron James, you may not be a Kevin Love fan. But then you saw LeBron James on Kevin like, let me check out this this Kevin Love guy. And after you end up liking him, and you end up being a fan towards that team. That's the concept of bringing well-established stars. And when people talk about, hey, they bring all these stars, why Mox is a champion, blah, blah, blah. I saw it this way. Someone hit me up. Yo, so I was watching TV the other day. I saw Jericho against his skinny dude, son. Like, yo, tell me about this dude. I was like, oh, yeah, he's from da 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 Where, he's from Queens? Yo, who are these other guys over here? I never saw right, this dude. Advertisement. He's put. He's put it on. He's put it over um, a lot of young talent. Yeah, young talent, and people are talking about could be done a little bit different. Of course, but it doesn't Smidge. matter though. It's still the first year though. Smidge. Oh, Variety. Variety did, did an article on them on their first year growth. Uh, that you know, it's pretty good to be doing what the what they're doing first year is pretty good. So I have a question. Um, because I watch AEW. It's more for you because you like AEW a lot more. So I'm in a I'm in a weird space about Young Bucks. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, are we transitioning them to being the heels, or are we like, what what direction are we going with Young Bucks? Because I felt real, I was pissed when they kicked Tony Schiavone. I'm that's not gonna hold you. To I was just like, just right, but that's what I'm saying. So literally, when it happened, I was like, yeah, are they the bad guys now? Yeah. I just missed the memo. Like, yeah. well, it's frustration kicking. Yeah, in. the frustration. Yeah. But it's like I, I will appreciate on their end the slow burn into them being frustrated because then um the fuck because I'm always gonna call them the revival. Then they were just like, "Yo, bro, like you could have came at us. Like why you didn't come at us?" Blah, blah, blah. Exactly. And I was like, "It's, it's yo, a slow this burn." Is, and guess I was what? Like, yo, this is they bring not the that internet, bad. you know, because Dave Meltzer gonna throw a bunch of stars at them. Wink to the internet. You know, even the guy that... Yo, when he mentioned Dave's name, I was like, Thank Whoa. you. Even the guy like... And this is why I said <laughs> AEW know like, their fan base. Me. The guy with the beard, he's the former record holder for Donkey Kong. But then they took away the record hold because he had been doing it... And, uh, Donkey Kong. Yeah, Donkey Kong. I like did. the old school one. But then they took it away because he didn't do it on... on he didn't do it on, on a authentic arcade hardware. He did it on an emulator. So he ended up cheating the scores. That's a whole other situation. But he's famous. The fact that you have to bring culture in there, well, yeah, well, yes, yeah, so, um, because they talking about what AEW having this video game. Yeah, they're they're gonna have a yeah, video, video game. game. Um, suppo- yeah. supposedly it's, I mean, Kenny wrestlers know how to promote anything. Any good exactly. wrestler know how to promote it. They may make everything look good. Mm-hmm. So Kenny is on record saying it's gonna be one of the best wrestling video games of all time because he's working very closely with the company that's that's creating the game. Now he's really and, big and the into video games. And the company that who created the game. Was the big part of making one of the great wrestling game, No Mercy. Yeah, the so Aki, so it was it's well famous for the Aki engine, which the Aki engine translates into Def Jam, Fife New York, New York, and Def Jam Vendetta. Yeah, one of the two greatest Three, wrestling could, wrestling games. No Mercy, no Mercy, uh, um, um, WCW Revenge, Revenge, all the um, all the um, all the um, Five Pro. No, they they, they made other games. They're fi- they're finding their footing exactly. But my issue is, take care of yourself and stop. 
mentioning WWE. Listen, that's fine. That if, part, I could, uh, that part, I could agree with you. I yeah, to talk to I, I just, no. I just, that part, I agree with you, man. I just need them to shut shown on that. I just need them to like chill Focus out with on that. Your own shit. But also, I don't like what they're doing with Rusev. But I, so that's why I said I don't know if I told y'all, but um, I told y'all on the show last night. I said, yo, listening to Jim Cornette review shit is is funny as fuck to me because it's it'd be real. I mean, of course, you gotta take everything with a grain of salt. But he spoke about Rusev, um, debut, and he was just like, he had like the way that just everything flowed. It just didn't make sense. It didn't make it didn't at make sense all. at all. It didn't make sense at all. And then you're another ma- marriage angle. Yeah, like what? like well, what are you doing? And then and then and then you complained. Th- th- this is my thing. You can go over to AEW, do your thing, right? Not mad at you. Go do your thing. But there's a couple things I want to say. Moxley is talking about oh, it's such a better place because I get so much fucking, I get so much freedom, bruh. You are the number one guy there or in the top five. Of course you got creative freedom. And you, to be honest, and everybody knows I love Dean Ambrose, but to be honest, it hasn't been used correctly. So I, I'm really having a hard time understanding how the fuck he's still champion. So, so he's, he's saying that, oh, yeah, I'm bouncing ideas off of Tony Khan, and then I get so much freedom. Bro, you're the number one guy. You're the number one guy there. Number one fucking guy there. A- am I correct? Yeah. No, absolutely. You're the champ. So, of course, you're going to listen to you. You don't think when The Rock or Stone Cold was there, they, they weren't bounce ideas off of, off of Vince McMahon? Again, do you know how the creative process is done in AEW? It, it's, it's, it's Tony. Do you, so, you don't know what's behind closed but, but doors. I'm, but I'm just saying, that's what he's saying. He Literally, John Moxley says that he just calls Tony and they bounce ideas off of each other. A lot of people have said the same thing about Tony, too. But I'm just saying, though. If you're the number one guy. Of course, you're gonna get that freedom. But a lot of people on the card said the same thing. Who's on the card said that? Big Swole said that yo, Tony's great. I'm everyone not saying said, I'm not saying he's a bad person. But everyone said that yo, I enjoyed the creative process. I, yeah, you enjoy the creative process because of your new company. But at the same time, don't make it seem like if you were the top guy in WWE, you wouldn't get that same freedom. But he he was the top guy and didn't treat him. Not like number that. one. Not number but one. Still though, he was still one of the top guys. Didn't treat him that it's, way. It's, it's like getting into a relationship. The person that you dated before might not see who you really are. They might treat you well, but they might not treat you as good as you should be treated. Okay. You move over to the other person, they see you as a gift. Okay. So who's going to treat them better? That's the first or second person? The second. second. Exactly. That's how it is. Also, you are such a new company, you're going to treat everybody good. Or even, I mean, even it goes to, like, let's say, um, for, like, instance, with, with Moxley. Like, he could go, like, on the WWE side. Like, you know, he might have been able to bounce ideas, and he felt like they went, they fell on deaf ears. And I think that's what probably is the big bigger difference is that it may not fall as as many deaf ears on the AEW side, but there may not be that many ears to bounce things off of either. I mean, so, listen. I mean, listen. It's just it's again, it's going to be different because it's a different company again, and it's and it's again, a different experience. A good chunk of us was not there when WWE was in their first years. Yeah, because so, it probably was Vince. Yeah, oh, and, it was Daddy. And Pritchard. It was yeah. it was Daddy it was, first. It was, it was different. So then a lot of these Vince. stuff that we criticize AEW for is because no, you you praising AEW. Yeah, for. you know, but but like a lot of criticism they may have is just like it's the first year. That's for any company because I've been a part of the first year to a lot of companies. The first year compared to the second year, night and day. Even with this podcast, the first year compared to the second year is different. We cut out a lot of segments. We got our flow. Now we found out how that we're able to have a groove for each other. We bounce those ideas a lot better. It takes a while. I understand that. So but now but it's so the now, double standard, bro. Right, it is. But now if we start this conversation 10 years from now, that's a problem. Yeah, and, and I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah. but, but then now going into Rusev... From what you were saying, unless you were lying, you said you were all for the marriage angle. Yeah, he was. You were bigging it up. And then now you come back and like you, you, you act like, like it was horrible. But then again, people are allowed to change their mind. You are allowed to change your mind. 
But you're doing the same thing, kind of. This is a different but way. It's, but it's it's also and in terms of taking accountability for that too. Like you can't sit here and shit on one thing and it's the exact. And that's just fair. That's really or everything. Just, or just say like at the time it, it I thought it was same, good. It could be the same. It goes back to the old the towel shit that I that we was talking about, and mm-hmm. I was just like, yo, regardless if it was on ROH New Japan, a towel being not thrown. About that. I'm not but, fucking with okay, it. Okay, I understand it in yeah. Survivor Series though. What they did that in Survivor Series years ago. Yeah. I just still don't fuck. I don't like it. I don't like it. With the whole Russo situation, I get it. I get it. But then again, if you listen on the Chris Vaughn podcast, he asked him a question. How you feel about that? Yo, listen, about the whole line and Bobby Lashley. Like, listen, they playing a role. Everybody want to ask me about the wedding situation. I don't know what to say. Why don't you ask them? Bobby has kids and wife at home. Ask him the question. Lana, you can ask her about it. He said, listen, they doing their job. That's the latest podcast I heard him on. I get what everyone's saying. I hundred percent agree with you. POV. Mm-hmm. Listen, this is it's very similar. That's my yeah, thing. It's very similar, but yeah, I'm not looking similar, forward. but similar. I'm looking forward to this because I want to see what's the next shot. They got me interested. Nevertheless, though, we should never talk about this whole Roman and Jay situation. Cause it's the best thing going on. Yeah, like it been heating them like hot grease in the summertime. Because then grease is extra hot in the summertime. Mm-hmm. This is the greatest thing ever. Mm-hmm. This is the greatest thing that Roman has been exactly doing for such why. a long time. Some people say this. I'm pointing out all that people say this. Oh, he was saying, you know, he kept on repeating and cycling. Da, 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 da. Okay. When Cena versus Brock, when Brock dominated him, he beat him up with three moves. You don't have a problem with that. And oh my gosh, it went too long. You should have went shorter because you know that Jay was going to lose. AJ, Finn, Daniel Bryan, and Rey Mysterio. What do all four men have in common? We knew that Brock's going to beat them. But yet, we accept the fact that he made it into a good match. Gave them the f- false hope of winning. That's how you do a great heel and face match. Okay. Roman is a different character. Little subtle stuff he did. No shirt. He carried the title the right way, not the cool way. You understand? When Jay was right there on the announce table. Talk to the goddamn mic. Hold on. Face Roman would have went over the rope, but he didn't. He ducked down and went around and beat him. He took the long way. Before the spear, he didn't go, woo He went, boom. He was upset when Jay kept on kicking out. So now, let's fast forward it. When Jimmy came out, hobbling down. Oh, that was so terrible. I hated that. da 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 I didn't say, yo, POV. You get the whole story like, cool. Some people want to book a little differently. But the fact that Jay knows both of them. Jay is older than, no, Jimmy's older than Jay by nine minutes. But now culture, their respect, respect your elders. And Roman's older than both of them. Boom. He understands Jay in that culture, people don't give up. They're strong. They're strong, willing people. They have strong wills. So you understand that Roman won't quit. Jay won't quit. And if I don't stop this, I'll get yelled at by the higher chief that you should look at you should have looked out your brother. Now listen to him, because you know how they are. Why you throwing the towel? Before it got any worse, he threw in the towel. We say, nah, nah, Jimmy, nah. You felt the emotions. You felt the emotions. So what you're saying though, is that that towel thrown was better than AEW's towel throw. You see, I didn't say that. No, no, no. That's what you're saying. No, no, okay, okay, but that's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, of course. There was more emotion. Yes, it was more an emotionally it invested. Made, no, power yes, throw. no. But the thing about it, what you're saying, basically, and I'm sorry to cut you off, it made sense. Yes. At the end of the day, it, it made, made sense. And guess what? It created it. It elevated two stars. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Okay, so, so. so that's the okay. That's the biggest difference it elevated, with the towel it, because it, it didn't give a negative connotation to Jay you. at all. Exactly. At all. Like exactly. Honestly speaking, anyone that watched Class of Champions, you're gonna look at Jay Uso very different. Exactly. Now. I'm gonna tell you Period. exactly why. I look at it from a new fan standpoint of view. Let's say I'm watching wrestling, whatever, whatever. Oh, who's this guy? They show the vignette, him being traditionally admit that I'm traditionally a tag team wrestler. So now, so yeah, a new he cut fan that promo on that Friday before. Right. I was, I felt sad. I right. was, I was like, damn. Right. Right. He was like, they asking who am I? Exactly. I was like, people can relate to that. Okay, now, that's, that's fast. Now, now, <laughs> now, 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 back to the match. So the fact that you saw Roman allow him to get different skills in the story point, you got different skills in as a new fan. Like, yo, this guy is nice. Add another layer of sympathy. So when you see him another match, you say that, nah, that's one tough SOB because he ain't quit. That was his brother who threw in the towel for him. So now people said that he should have pinned him. Pin him and the story, why? You have another B 
pay per view coming up. Hell in a Cell. Continue that storyline to there. Because that's just something that you build new stars on those B pay per views. I mean, and also, see, that's why, like, people aren't going to give WWE as much credit as they should. Like, yeah. in terms of the building of the storylines, and I'm telling you, my favorite part of last week's SmackDown was fucking Alexa Bliss looking at Roman for longer than she was supposed to. And that shit for me, I said the foreshadowing in that. Trumps everything else these niggas is about to do. As, and, as and long as it, nobody gets injured. Yeah, nobody gets injured, of, of course. course. Or gets COVID. Yeah, and <laughs> that's the beauty part about that match. It turned Jay to it add layers to him. So whenever match you could go in, the draft is coming You take up. him seriously. Take him seriously. You take him, you take him seriously. And so it builds. Like, we complain about not having new stars. We complain about bringing people from the past, from other places. You build up Jay. So the, the thing is... That's what I'm saying. So people was like, "Why do you have against the uh, the, the towel being thrown when it came to AEW?" My issue was Brian Cage. Yes, I know the whole point was because Did Brian Cage ha- has has the shoulder issue problem. Yeah, and and John Moxley was working the shoulder. Nah, you making Brian look weak, and you still have and and from that br- week, Brian. Cage, I love no Brian Cage because he can move so well. He's a monster. Yeah. He's a big dude. Now you have John Moxley, who's a smaller guy. He didn't tap out. A towel was thrown in the ring. So you think? When the Do you understand? I respected more the fact that Eddie Kingston passed the fuck out than tapped out. But that's but that's that show. <laughs> what, what is that show? <laughs> That shows that shows heart. Everything you just talked if about. If Brian Cage would have passed out, I could I would have owned that versus yeah, the fucking towel. It, 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 yes, you know the big difference. What? One person I tell a story better than better than, better than the next person. Eddie Kingston is one that he knows his character. That's what I'm saying because Brian Cage yeah, yeah. acts like like he's my size <laughs> and he's my height. I like Brian Cage. I like Brian Cage. But I just think that yeah. Brian Cage needs to. Really take the time out to really find his character who he is. The thing is, bro, if you're gonna be that big, be act like that. Yeah. You're that big, yeah. and you can you can do a couple flips here and there. Of course, to, 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 to spice it up. Look at um, look at my son Luchasaurus or or, or my son Keith Lee. They switch it up. They switch it up. But the thing about it, at the end of the day, you're such a big dude, and Moxley, you're making Moxley look, look like bigger than you. The, the, so my point is, what you just spoke about between the J and Roman match. It made sense. Absolutely. It was realistic. But a lot of people didn't like, like it. So, no. A lot of people well, just wanted to complain. Yeah. And for the, on a person who's a casual fan, they're watching it. They love him. They're going to go, what is going on yeah. here? Why is he whooping his ass? Why isn't he giving it up? They toss it. This Why is are they mic'd up so loud? <laughs> yeah, they're mic'd up like crazy. But yo, it was, I loved it. Yo, that shit fucked me up. I was like, yo, how many mics do it. they have I around them? But shout out to the announcer. Shout out to the commentary team. Oh, Corey Graves sold the sold fuck it. out of the and, entire and, and, but, but that's But that's what I'm saying because if you're watching something, you want to believe it. Yeah. At the end of the day, you're putting on a show. Yeah. At the end of the day, you want people to believe what's going on. So yeah. if I'm a casual fan and I, and I watch the match between Moxley and... Cage and tassels a towel and you're gonna be like, what the fuck? Because because because, because you know what? You can't see his shoulder through his shoulder. It's just a, res- a regular submission move. Mm. I can't see that his shoulders hurt. He could be screaming and stuff like that, but all I see visually, all I see is a big dude, muscular as hell. Getting the towel thrown in. And a th- towel thrown in. It's just like it's just like prime example. When you play the new Mortal Kombat game, right? With the whole fatalities. Now, they let's say the fatalities where like um, my son Luke Cage, you know, punched the guy in the face. You'll see an x-ray of him breaking his his jaw right there for the visuals. I mean go, uh mind you, my brother's right. There's no visuals for you to get invested into that. Compare, yes. like for example, Stone Cold. Where you saw the blood gushing out, <sighs> and my man you felt passed the pain. out. He went <sighs> passed out, and then got back. And then that's the thing I, I love. I absolutely love that match. At the end, he passed out, then got up, and then and then and walked out on his own. Like what? they was trying to help him what? up, and he was like, "Nah, I'm this good." Minor detail: He was limping. Oh, speaking of limping, pause. 
I was watching some. I rewatched Untold with the with the Rock. Mm-hmm. You know, I love the Rock. So I watched like yes, six times. Yeah. That's not your dad. Uh, yeah. It's my uncle. Hello. First of all, our uncle's. I'm part Samoan. You are no, not, not part Samoan. We're from an island. Yeah. <sighs> yes. But see, not so of the island Haiti. of Samoa. I'm part Samoan. You're not part Samoan. Now, how are you going to be like. <laughs> So, listen, anyway. stop, stop. That's no, you I, stop. Stop. That's when I'm amazing strength. Yes. Continue. Part Samoan. You're so, not. remember when he had the match with um, Ken Shamrock? Ooh. And Shamrock m- messed up his leg? Yeah. Messed up his ankle? Yeah. The Rock sold it for like three weeks. Three Cru- crutches and all. weeks. He s- no, no crutches. <laughs> he had no crutches. He came out limp because it was, it was leading up to him. For, for for um kicking out Farouk out the nation. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think I watched him. And then night. he's limping out. There's like a week, the raw after limping out on the same exact leg. Oh, maybe I didn't get to that part yet because I've been watching old raws. Oh, and the raw that I watched, he was see? Ken Shamrock was literally going. It was it was that was a really good storyline because literally every week he was going through every member of the nation. Yeah. So the episode of Raw I watched the other night was him versus Godfather. D-Lo? Yeah. No, he had already did D-Lo the week before. And then that week I watched the the episode I watched he did um he did Godfather mm-hmm. and then and then the Rock came out in his vest <laughs> no shirt under <laughs> came out and told him the only way you're gonna get through me is you gotta go through everybody in the nation and ah ah and then he said but you know what next week you're going against Farouk like and Farouk the cam yo cameraman shout out to him back in the nineties that nigga zoomed right into Farouk's face yeah so and he was so uninterested and, in everything and that's selling that's selling that's those little things what Joey A talked about last week so when you see these things it's realistic you get invested that's why sometimes what I'm invested in is I was invested in um, Private Party Me too. because I know who they are. Yeah. Right. I'm invested in that. Yeah. Jericho, I'm invested yeah. in that. Um, y- you get invested in certain things, and that's what that's what you fall in love with. Yeah, right. Because but, have a whole but sometimes value. I want you to sell something to me. Yeah, make to, me like it. To, to make me like it, I don't like Moxley. Okay, so when that match happened, I'm just like, this is this is whack. I- I'll give you an example of like, you're right. Like little s- s- um, subtle stuff works. Like, for example, I didn't know who Darby Allen was. I'm gonna give you two examples. I didn't know who Darby Allen was, right? I was like, yo, who's this dude look like mad, mad like at a wrestling? He needs to eat more, whatever. <laughs> but when he went toe to toe with Cody Rhodes and went to draw, I was like, whoa, who's this guy that who went toe to toe with Cody Rhodes and almost beat him? So that got interested in stuff that he'd been doing throughout the week. Mm-hmm. But the one moment I realized that Darby Allen gets it, the whole aesthetic, he gets the bigger picture in sports entertainment is it was him and Moxley. Versus the inner circle, right? Moxie got jumped. Are y'all niggas listening? Yes. yes. Dang. You're talking about Darby Allen and how he got jumped. I am listening. I'm oh, sorry. Right. I don't have so, to look at you all the so, time. So, like, Darby Allen was the inner circle. So then he was getting beat up, right? Mm-hmm. So he crawled to his corner, stood up, did like this, and hot tagged himself in. And he was a house of fire. That's when I realized that that little thing right there got me excited. That's when he became my favorite wrestler. It's the little stuff that goes a long way in wrestling. That's why I'm starting to realize that. People overlook that. over, yeah, over like, life. Like, yeah, general. people overlook. People just want the biggest stuff in your face. Because this, this, this is the era of the microwave matches. But people don't appreciate the slow, stove-cooked, iron-cast meals. They don't. They don't understand it that. It's delicious. Oh, yeah. Iron Cast? I got me one for my for my crib. Phenomenal. Oh, man. I cooking steak on that. You cook oh, lasagna. Nice. You can put it in the oven. Oh man, like a fiesta. Get it? That's fiesta in Spanish. Cause you're Spanish. But fiesta's party, baby. But okay. Yeah, it's like a party it's in like a party. Yeah. Okay. Because it's mm. most. I just needed him to pause. finish that part. Pause. Yeah. So overall, <laughs> it's the little stuff in wrestling that people overlook and don't appreciate. That's true. That's that's why that was that's what this is what Joey said last week. That's what make a wrestler. This is between a wrestler and a star. Mm-hmm. All right, so real quick, as we all know, um, WWE has put on, um, no, um, WWE announced that they will be hosting the WWE Draft coming up October 9th for SmackDown and then October 10, 11, 12th, the 12th, the following Monday for Raw. So um, three people you would want to see switch. Who would you want to see switch? 
Um, That's not already switched. Because they low-key have been doing trades and shit. And I'm just like, what? Like, this week on, <laughs> when Dana Brooke, I was like, wasn't she already on Raw? And then, and then he was like, no, he's, she's been on I want to see down. Sasha on Raw. Yeah, me too. Or I really want to see Sasha see, on Raw. See, but I feel like if that happened, then we could get Sasha Banks versus Bianca. If yes. Bianca stays on Raw, so that that's a I want Charlotte on SmackDown. I definitely would rather Charlotte on SmackDown. Yeah, Charlotte on SmackDown. And for me, I feel the Miz should go back to Raw. Okay. Because I feel... They got to separate Miz and Morrison, Yeah, yeah, to yeah. Be like, Miz to Raw and Morrison to SmackDown. Because they just separate... Not, not, not really enough to be going against you, but just separate them. Boom. That's one pick. Um, I feel the Hurt Brisson should go to SmackDown. Like, I feel the Hurt Brisson should oh, go to SmackDown. Because the reason why uh-huh. I said that for the Hurt Brisson to go know. to SmackDown because there's more of a bigger landscape. Because they did what I had to do on Raw, but on SmackDown, it would give them, like, this is a throwback. A lot of the heydays for a lot of these guys was on SmackDown, dogs. Mm-hmm. It was. You no, know? Yeah, but Shelton and... Shelton, and MVP. No, Shelton MVP. was Raw. MVP was really big on SmackDown. No, 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 no. Actually, Shelton got a star on SmackDown because we found out who he was with the World's Great... Because it was, yeah, it was him and... Team. um. Fucking Charlie Sha- Haas. Charlie Haas. And, and then, then Kurt MVP, was on SmackDown. But yeah. MVP was MVP the high, was SmackDown. one of the highlights yeah, of SmackDown. Yeah, Bobby Lashley, SmackDown. Yeah, you know, I'm not a Bobby Lashley fan. So yes, he was. No, I said, I'm not a Bobby Lashley fan, so I'm not going to hate Bobby Lashley. Oh, yeah. Haters going to hate. Yeah. Shut up. But SmackDown. And the fourth person, the third person is a switch. I definitely feel that the spice of the division, yo, I really think that they should bring Easy. Shayna Blazer and Nia Jax to SmackDown. Because I feel that they lack a lot of... They honestly got to get rid of them tag, that tag title. But they don't... They don't honestly. They don't promote this it This right. is coming from a female. They honestly... The, I've never... I never actually... I never wanted it to begin with because there's none of the body sword. But they don't it's promote it right real way. tag team sword. They don't. The body's at the floor. That, well, was, a really, that was a really good theme song. Classic. I wish I don't remember Classic. what paper it was, but that Roy was a really Rumble. good theme song Rumble. for a pay-per-view. Yeah. Um, that's when like that's when WWE used to push you on some new classics like yeah. Ooh. And now I feel like NXT does a really good job with their theme songs. NXT, so I yeah. end up always getting the yeah. playlist on Spotify. But WWE did be so lazy song. with their theme songs. Like, yo, did you? See, how did you feel about Alice's Black News music? It's trash. It threw me off. I feel trash. like they should get back. I, I like um, words in the song. I personally feel like they should get my son Jim Johnson back. I think they, he retired, didn't he? I think I think you just, uh, let them go, let them go. But what they should do is get a, is get in house producers, like legit get three types of people, get in house producers and in house like writers. That's literally what you got to do. I mean, Josiah is cool though, but I never seem diverse outside of hip hop. Yeah, but I'm talking about get other get like yeah. a couple of people from yeah, different people. from different ranges. Like, like yo, hey, I have this rock band. They're really good. Yo, Rock, listen, write music. Listen, listen, yeah. listen. All I'm saying is this. To all y'all black creators out there, creators in general out there, if you're a body body, yo, make <laughs> remixes to your favorite wrestler it, and put it to uh, a set into us and put it on YouTube. We will promote it. Yo, if you're hungry, that's why I said this is this is the next the decade of the black renaissance for all black creators, even creators outside of black creators. Do this. If you're a body body, make songs and submit to WWE. Simply, Nicki Minaj did a song for Stephanie back in the day. A lot of people don't know that. Sook the Shaka did, did MVP song. Exactly. Wow, that looks- I'm coming. So- <laughs> yeah. That's actually a classic. That yeah. shit, that come shit's on. so boxed. Come on, classic WWE theme so songs. Boxed. I forgot you know? what we listened to. What, what, what was the theme song when I was listening to? Shoot the me day? down. And I'm, I'm out of time. That now so say boxed. goodbye. What is yours? What is mine? Oh, my God. So that same Raw episode I was telling y'all about... I'm so over y'all. He warned you about to stop living. I'm mad that it's on Soak the Shocker Spotify though. I'm coming. You felt that. I'm coming. Shout out to Mark Carey theme song. Woo! Classic. Yo, get artists like that. Yo, think about it. Yo, listen. Two things. The Hurt Business theme song in the beginning sounds like Jaws. And I've been meaning to tell y'all that for the past it few weeks. It does. It sounds it, it cracks me up literally every fucking week. But it's fire, week. though. That shit is a bop. But then, fucking... Who's that? Um, yeah. Woo! Woo! Yo, I'm really mad they never, like, performed that shit, like, live, live for him. Like, at WrestleMania. You felt him. Yeah. That's you. The Hall of Pain. Introduce the 
Paul of Pain. First ballot, Randy. Shout out to Randy for putting on Mark Henry for the brothers. Ooh. I'm over here. Can, can the beat drop? Paul of Pain, Mark and Henry. Paul of Pain. Oh my gosh. So the second thing, um, the overall that I watched the other day, um, if you ever go back to um, Los Boricos, Oh, Los Boricos. With, with um, oh, those, Savio oh, Vega. Oh! Yo, so Savio once again, Vega. Savio Vega, so Los Boricos versus DOA, like, trilogies were always on point. So they had, because um, the world I was watching was actually in Uniondale, it was Long Island. So they had a Long Island street fight. Don't ask me why, but it was, like, beef it was like eight. It was an eight man tag. I mean, yeah, it was eight man tag, and I was just like, what the fuck? But it was like no holes barred, no whatever. Forever beefing. But, but when Los Bonicos came out and the niggas was rapping the song coming out, like Savio Vega was Shh. rapping the song, I said, yo, yo, classic. This shit is still a bop. Like you can't deny that. And they came out with the Puerto Rican flags and ah, ah. I was like, yo, this shit you know is that, crazy. You know, like Loki was a, um was a bop. Our truth. And um, Road Dog, we get yeah, rock. That uh, rock, yeah, and no bullshit. Actually, still a bop to me is Gold Dust theme song. Of course, like you legit. know, also a throwback bop too. Shut the bedroom. Ain't no stopping me. Yo, that's now. my shit. Ain't no stopping yo, me. And, no yo, stop. when he came out, when he came back, it, I was praying he would use that song because I was like, yo, that is my shit. Son, that's what I'm telling you. Back in the day, WWE has songs where you could bop to an arena, like like D'Lo Brown, the perfect club song. No, no, no. They got the real deal now. Ooh, imagine you playing that in a club, catching a dub to that. Oh! Imagine catching Are a dub to that. To this? Oh, who's dubbing to this one? Son, wrestling ho. Right. <laughs> like wrestling host. Yo, <laughs> this is wrestling. This is wrestling. This is wrestling to back that thing up. I'm telling you. You might as well just play back that thing up, though. No, 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 no. We want wrestling version. This is it right here. I'm telling you. Imagine catching the dub to this song. Look at the real deal now. That type you up. I'm telling you, B. I'm, I'm, I'm over here. Okay. So, guys, real quick. We're coming down to the end of the show. Um, What are two things this week in wrestling that really caught your eye? Something appealing? Something you want to talk about real quick? Um, Who wants to go first? I, uh, what else? My boy Willie Hobbs is getting is getting that. Yo, you are so. The FTW we gotta try title. to get this nigga on. Like I don't know. I wanna F- talk to him. F- it's a high chance that you gonna say no. You never know. But it don't matter. Um, okay, so Will Hobbs. Because you got that F- F- FTW. Guy, okay. Uh, what F- else? What else was shot. good? Um, seeing Private Party getting that rub from um, Jericho. Chris Jericho. Those are my two things. Like I'm I'm loving what AEW is trying to do right mm. now. I feel like they finally found their footing. Yeah. Um, NXT was dope. Mm-hmm. You know I'm a big Kyle O'Reilly fan. Yes. Oh my god. Like that promo. I am beyond oh, classic. I've excited. Been, I've been for saying Kyle he is my favorite member for Mad Long. Yeah, he gets it. And also because when I finally got the disease, I was like, damn, he's still he's still out here just kicking just ass, killing it. He got cancer? No, I think he has, got diabetes. I think that's what it is. Diabetes? I think. Yeah, so. it's not. It's not. It's, it's yeah. It's, it's not, not cancer. It's diabetic. Yeah. Shout it's, out to the diabetic warriors. I know your struggle be me and diabetic and still doing it. I know that like, you get dehydrated real quickly. I know those struggles be. I know those. So yeah. All right. So those are your two. All right. Um, Mr. Black, with some things this week in wrestling that caught your eye. Once again, once again, Black Excellence Monday. The Black Excellence Mondays is real. I'm saying this. People complain about oh Bianca, Bianca about letting not use to her. Shout blah, blah. out to Shug. I, I was like, is that Shug? <laughs> and running. <laughs> guess what? They have her on screen. They keep her in your memories with these vignettes. We may not appreciate it, but that, but that, but that, but that little girl doesn't matter what color she is. You look at Bianca Belair. Oh no, I absolutely appreciate the I, because I think this generation of wrestling doesn't understand the power of vignettes. Exactly. Like think about like so when I watched the Austin Kurt um podcast episode that he did on the network. Yeah, I watched them. And Kurt talks, you know, they talk about his early stages, about him signing the contract, yeah. him not doing it at first and all that stuff. But the one thing Kurt talked about was all the vignettes that led up to his Thank debut. You. Thank where you. he was always talking about the three eyes. And you. And, you ne- and you never forgot about shit and like that. So with Bianca, what? it's like right. the fastest, the toughest. Exactly. Like, those are the exactly. things you're never going to forget. And guess what? And guess what? You know why these vignettes are important? I'll give you 
Three reasons. First, it shows that little girl out there is not afraid that she may be iffy about joining track and doing some of the boy stuff, lifting weights and stuff like that. She see she see Bianca Belair mm-hmm. doing it. And for us, back in the day, it was MVP vignettes that got us interested. The Mr. Perfect vignettes. Oh, Yo, my son catching is, is his, we his own about that path. Day. He threw it, caught it. I still remember that. Or him, him, him playing ball, that's just perfect. Yeah. These vignettes promote people. Great. You feel me? You still remember that. That's one. It shows that girls could do it too. Because we are ushering in the era, I'm telling you, where women are going to take more forth in sports, have more interest in sports. That's one. Two, it keeps you in mind that, okay, cool. It keeps you everyone fresh in everyone's mind that I remember Bianca Belair. You may not know stuff about her cause, because you didn't watch NXT or do your homework. You're going to say that. Yo, is she really that nice and track? Is she really that strong? Yeah. You're gonna Google it. Nah, she really is. She no, really no, 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 no. Some people may not know they think it's fake. They may Google like, yo, she's strong, strong. That's 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 two. And three, it keeps it keeps her fresh for the ring without actually using her in the ring. Because now when she comes back, she might be in a squash match. It feeds someone else from the Indies, a woman that who may not get her foot in there. So that same one she may squash may become the next. I'm um, the so woman damn, champion. Bianca's See, probably it, gonna stay on Raw right, Raw but it helps two people: Bianca Belair and a challenger. Three different ways to promote somebody to get someone over too with that job. You may see, oh shoot, I remember that job, but da, 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 she's nice, cool. She got her up. Or somebody on the indie. Exactly, yeah. Bianca Belair. The WWE is doing everything they have to do. They're mixing classic with new. Mm-hmm. That, I said she should do the, the Mr. Perfect type of stuff. Yo. But I feel like that's the that's the vision I think they have. Mm-hmm. Simply. Simple. Which is really good. Simple. And I applaud that. Okay, you know, so Bianca. Okay, what Bianca else? Bianca Belair. You know, once again, you know, one thing I have to keep on employing, then like the whole, I kind of like the Rey Mysterio story. Yo, this shit is taking a turn. Like, And uh, I like this. And that's, no, no, no. Some people say this. I got to say this. But Buddy Murphy Some and Aaliyah's say wedding this. Some people say this. Oh, weeks. if you're okay with this, you know, you endorse pedophiles. Yo, shut the hell up. I see it this way. Listen, she is 19. The man is 32 years old. I get that. But she is an adult. So she can make her own decisions. Am I okay it's with that? Story but line. it's a storyline. But yeah, but yeah, people you look on her Instagram, that, she got a whole ass man. My thing is this. She does. Yeah, if you look on her Instagram, yeah, it's a she got a whole line. ass nigga. And I like this because <laughs> it keeps So it's like come what? on guys. It keeps Dominic on screen. Give him something to do. Dominic is actually really, yeah, really good. Yeah, he's good. And nice. on top of that, some people this is something very stirring me. You have pedophile your endorsements. I say this. Yo, if you're not okay with your daughter doing this, but you're okay with the storyline, you're a hypocrite. I see it this way. If my daughter came up to me and say, Daddy, I'm dating a man who's 32 years old. I want to say, I'm giving the, the dangers of it. But I say, you know what? You still got to live your path, daughter. No, and then but if he treats you right, at the end of the day, I can't say nothing. Listen, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to hold you. My daughter's not dating a 32 year old. She's 19. Yo, fine. But, but hold on. But hold on. If she's playing a role on TV that's fine. as a 19 year old does dating a 32 year old, that's different. But in real life, real actual life, I'm not a fan but of that. Listen, listen. This is what you said. You said this. I understand it's just a role for television. I get that. But at the same time, if it was my daughter, I would not be okay with that. You articulate that because you understand this is just art. It's simple. I just not, I'm not doing that. Okay, no, I respect this, this that. This nigga's getting punched in the face. No, I respect I'm that. Dead. I respect that. But then, but then, don't be the same type of person that will punch that dude in the face. But yet, yeah, you're dead nine year olds. It is what it is. Okay, so you're saying you're invested into the Mysterio, Murphy, and of course, my third one Sethi. is I gotta say Night of Champions. Night of Champions was something for everybody. Something was very good. That ladder I match. I tell people you didn't. You I think when you went into it was such a low expectation. It was good. Not Yo, that ladder match. Oh, well, that ladder match, and I'm glad it went on first. Oh, some people say it was too long. Then no, I'm like it's three how? niggas in a ladder match. And it, it has Sami a Zane, solid thirty minutes. And Sami Zayn, it made sense. Sami Zayn used AJ Sammy own mom- listen. Zane. He used AJ own momentum to get him up the ladder, and then secretly AJ was so paying attention to the getting the championship to do tighten him up. AJ could not knock him off because he could get hurt, and AJ tried to get him off real that's quick. Here. That's what I tell people. Sammy's Storytelling smartest, at his finest. Smartest fucking listen, Night in Champions to me was that pay per view where if you are an up and coming wrestler, 
you watch that pay-per-view because there's many different ways to tell a story. For example, you know somebody like Oscar was injured. You know that Oscar still had beef with Bailey from back in the day. So you know what? I want to embarrass her. I want that championship. But then Bailey know that, nah, Oscar's too dangerous. Let me DQ myself. Then it's forward seeing, once again, but let's say it makes sense with Sasha. Sasha did not get the upper hand on Bailey. All the, the overhand but on Bailey at all. But shout outs to whoever, once again, is on production camera team for Night of Champions because the angles that they Big got that night Big was, it, it, to me, on a, on a, on a looking standpoint, it enhanced the experience of the actual show and it enhanced the actual storytelling because literally the cameraman had was focused solely on Bailey when she hit Oscar with that chair and literally when you just saw a whole nother body into the whole fucking screen, you were like, who the fuck is that? Shot and then you turn around, you're like, oh shit, it's Sasha. And, but and the cameraman held his held his ground right there. Sh- they did the same thing. And they did the same, and thing, with the the same match thing with Randy. They did the same thing with Roman and Jay. The camera and like just production wise, Understand. and we've always said that WWE's production is just everybody on level. says it, and a lot of people imitate their style. Always imitate them. And pe- well, the, the 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 um the NFL stole half of the camera angles from the XFL. Correct. Oh, XFL returning twenty twenty two. Thanks, Rock. And some people say, <laughs> no, no, no. Honestly, appreciate you, Rock. Honestly. Honestly, don't be surprised if Vince end up becoming some weird commissioner for the XFL. Oh, I don't, I, like, I, I won't don't be surprised because that's a good way to keep Vince. Like, he trusts The Rock. He's going to put some money He trusts The Rock. Like, yo. Shots The Rock for being on Impact. It was going to be on yeah, Impact. Yeah, he trusts yeah, The Rock. Yeah, like, Honestly, man, Ken. I'm telling you. I proclaim it's the beginning of the episode. Yo, mock my words. Yo, this is going to be the decade of black excellence. I'm telling you, you're going to watch this and say, Mrs. Black predicted this. Yo, hashtag decade of black excellence. Everybody's going to come up. Black excellence is rapid. I see people with their own beauty. I see people with their own beauty. The beauty podcast. Our voice is being heard. I'm telling you, the, the, the decade of black excellence. I'm telling you. Okay, so we have that. Uh, me real quick, and then we're going to go to NXT predictions, and then we're going to sign off. Um, once again, Alexa Bliss on SmackDown to me. Was my highlight on on Monday, on Friday Night SmackDown because I love foreshadowing. I love the fact that you're sprinkling in certain things and it makes you think outside of the box. So that I can appreciate. Um, I was disappointed in not seeing Raw Underground this week. It was so such a big disappointment, but it's okay. Yeah, my dick's full. Hopefully next week it returns. Uh, my homeboy that works at um he does he teaches Impact. baseball um at Chelsea Piers. He FaceTimes me and say I haven't spoken to him in months. He FaceTimes me and I couldn't pick it up because I was at work. He's like, yo, Shane's here. I was like, nigga, what? So he trains. Um, he teaches his, Shane's sons baseball at Chelsea oh, really? Pierce. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. every time he sees Shane, he'll hit me up. <laughs> so he hit me up. He's like, Shane's here. I was like, what? That's Shane cool. Lives, Shane lives in Tribeca. Yeah. So I did, but it was just so funny. He hit me up about that. But um, so Alexa Bliss on, on SmackDown, and then honestly, the second is actually gonna go to your boy Darby Allen versus. Um, Ricky starts oh this week on AEW. Gosh. That to me, Ooh. first of all, for y'all to open Young up, Lions. for y'all to open Young up Lions. was amazing. Young Lions, for you guys to say to say what could have been a huge ass botch towards the end of that match. I appreciated that, um, but it was. I thought it was a great match. Um, I truly enjoy Ricky Starks and that's why I f- that's why I didn't understand the whole towel throwing shit because the towel throw shit happened with Cage and then Tash introduced Ricky Starks as a part of the team and now we're focusing more on Ricky Starks than Brian Cage and Brian Cage is the FTW champion w- what do we do that at? Ricky is more, more charismatic yeah. that shit is correct yeah. But it's like, wait, what? Honestly, like, okay. The future is good for wrestling. But I, I thoroughly enjoyed no, that match. Was very good. That match, and then okay. That speed. So there was right, right. So the other thing, and then we'll get into predictions. My grip. <laughs> Everybody knows I like the Dark Order. I actually really, really enjoyed the Dark Order. Me too. And my grip with Cody <laughs> was the whole melee. After, so he got real dramatic, told Dasha, I don't accept. Then walked out. Then came back. <laughs> Makes complete sense now. We got the same birthday. He came back. Oh. Me, Cody, and Tyson. So much complete sense now. Then he comes back, and you know, it's hard because once you realize he has a list, all you do is watch his mouth move then. So all I started to do was watching his mouth move. 
I was like, what are you talking about? And then he started yelling, and I was like, oh, my God. And then um, Brody Lee comes out with the suit on, <laughs> the fly-ass suit on, took the shit off, and then they start fucking each other up. And then everybody in the backstage came out. I was like, what the fuck is going on Nye here? Rose and then fucking, yo, Nia Rose punching the fuck out of a random chick for no fucking reason. But it makes sense. That I it made zero sense. No, because. It made because, none because at all. You've never been in a hood, in, in, in a hood brawl yo, before. Yo, and she came from out of the barricade before. to punch this random bitch. That's what bitch. happens in the hood brawl. That shit didn't make any sense. In the hood brawl, it happens. Zero sense. And then, people. And then. You the, got to a fight? Uh, no. So you Absolutely won't know. not. You won't know. You but that shit was trash. Your whole entire life? Nope. You will never know about hood brawls then. No. That's, I've ran, that's I've ran away from gunshots, but I've never been in a fight. I'm telling you. It's so, different. um. You know about the hood brawls, right? I know, I know what you're talking about. But it's just like, but it didn't make sense. So what to was you, going on? To you, it to makes what no was sense. going on? To you, it doesn't the make no sense. The focus was Dark Order and Cody. It made no you sense for Nyla Rose. You got your hits in. She, yo. But no one even hit her. Like, I get it. You're supposed if it, to do that. Yo, but I get it if the bitch would have bumped into her and then she jumped over and then fucked her up. Cool. Nothing That's that it. happened. You're supposed it's, to do that. It's anyway, wrong. and then and then the icing on the cake was fucking Brandy's ass running out. Toot, 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 toot that little ass out, ran out. Then got on the top rope and then flipped to do the spot on all the guys. And shout out to all of them niggas because they sold it. Because I was just like, bitch, you. you not even two pounds. Shout How out the fuck are you going to flip on these niggas shout out to and Bruce. they all going to fall? Shout out to Bruce. He said, I seen this in hood fights. Thank you, Bruce. Oh, my God. Whatever. You, exactly. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, but I, I appreciate. So this whole next week, and we're talking about hopefully the dog collar match because I'm not too, like, Excited? Cody, no, no, no. But Cody is but, these old school matches, though. But I like, I like, the, I like the difference. I, I can deal. I can, I can dig something that's different. Shout out to, so, shout out to um Brody Lee. Oh, Brody Lee is selling the fuck out of all of this. So I feel like Brody. Um, Lee, Adrian Brown said that's what Nia did to Becky. No, true. true. No, 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 no. That no, was no, different. no. That was, that was way different. different. That was like they were literally comparing. brand versus brand. Yeah, that, that doesn't know. Yeah, right. That doesn't yeah, count. Right. That doesn't count. That, that doesn't count. count. But she didn't even touch her. She went like this, and then put that. That's and touching went, her. Fuck you, weird. That's touching her. It, 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 and she on the other yeah, brand. That's brand, a wholly though. different and situation. That made Becky Lynch right there. Facts. And the Becky greatest, has still not thanked Nia Jax. The greatest accident in wrestling. Fact. One of them. All right, real quick, NXT TakeOver this weekend. If you are in the New York City area and you want to um, dare to, to live a little free, come out and join us at Legends. Um, you can RSVP. Why you put it that way? What? I mean, we're still living in the pandemic. You got to be real about it. <laughs> I can't be like, come on down and make sure you wear your mask, temperature checks at the door. I ain't trying to get sick, but I love y'all, so we're just going to make it work. Um, but once again, NXT TakeOver, um, there was a little controversy at the beginning of the week, they weren't sure just because of COVID and things like that. But the sh- but oh, trips trips said the show must go he on. Called you and told you that, right? and it's gonna. I wish he, yo if yo if Triple H ever called my phone, y'all got to come get me. Like y'all gonna have to come get me. Like I forgot what I don't know. I forgot what app it is or like what it is where you can like pay for someone to do like a phone call or someone. Like Rick Flair is charging like five hundred dollars, which is obnoxious as fuck. But I get it because Rick is about that money, so I ain't mad at it. But I was like, nigga, I'm not doing that. But um, but once again, NXT the show must go on. And Trip said it's gonna have a different vibe. This Takeover 31 is gonna have a different feel to it, different look to it. So it's interesting to see what's gonna happen. But real quick, um, we have the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. Um, Santos Escobar who is the current reigning um, NXT Cruiserweight Champion versus Isaiah Swerve Scott. Happy belated um, Swerve. Happy belated. Swerve um, who do you guys have? Come on, man. I think I think Swerve takes it. I definitely yeah. think Swerve is going to win this time around. Uh, we have Kushida versus Velveteen Dream. Uh, Velveteen's been fucking with Kushida the past few weeks. So, uh, who Velveteen you guys? Dream. Dream. Velveteen Dream. Awesome. Uh, we have the NXT. This is a ladder match now? NXT North American Championship ladder match. We have Damian Priest versus um, your boy, Johnny Gargano. Johnny. Johnny Wrestling. wrestling. Absolutely not. But Damian, Damian Priest is going to win, you know. Um, we have for the NXT Women's Championship, Io Shirai versus bum ass Candice LeRae. I think, I think, I think Candice should win this one. If Johnny wins, Candice wins. Yeah, he should. The yeah. only way that that unfortunately yeah. happens. Yes, it's the, the the first couple of um NXT. Yes, no, yeah. no, Lord. And then last but not least, we have for the NXT Championship, we have Finn Balor versus Kyle O'Reilly representing Undisputed Era. I feel okay. This is what I think. I think that Kyle Riley might win. 
He should win if at least Finn versus Walter. Okay. Because I feel like Walter's good, whatever, but Finn adds that he has that extra star pad that need an NXT over there. Okay. So you say Kyle. So Wilkins, what do you say yeah, real quick? Say? It's um, Ky- um Finn is winning. I want Kyle to win, but Finn is winning. Okay. Yeah, we all know I Finn's w- gonna win. I would definitely prefer Kyle. Just because I think it's a, I think it adds another element and I think it, it definitely it goes back to the Roman J where someone that's been in the tag team, Red Dragons is one of my favorite tag teams of all times, um, which is him and, and Bobby um Fish. But to have your own singles run, yeah. I think is very important, especially in your career. Rumors so. has it is they like Adam Cole gonna be, become here and Bob. I mean, um, Kyle Riley become here and the other two gonna stay. Um, not sorry, Kyle. But Kyle and and Adam's gonna be face. No face and and then strong and Bobby is gonna be here. Yeah, yeah, gonna be here. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. But yeah. once again, you can catch the us. draft is coming up. The, so yeah. the draft is coming up. A lot of things is coming up. We're heading into Survivor Series season, which is my favorite season of the year. Um, but it all, once again, this Sunday at Legends, join us for the reunion, um, six months in the making, um, uh, make sure to wear your mask, make Please. sure temperature checks. If you Please. are sick, stay that ass home. Cause we don't want Please. it. Um, yes, yes. you can FaceTime us if you're sick. Cause we'll be like, all right, you're a part of the party. But other than that, we want to thank every single person that has already RCP'd and that has been supporting us even through during the pandemic, before the pandemic, and things like that. We really, truly always appreciate everyone that has had a hand into, you know, creating the Job Tears podcast. Granted, we are the faces, but it always takes a lot of people around us for the support and love for us to keep going. So we thank you guys so much. Um, anything else before we go real quick? No. No? No. 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 We're good. All right. So catch us this Sunday and the next week. Oh, we'll Cats and Dogs episode. Make sure to absolutely check out the latest episode of Cats the and Dogs. Shout out to Amanda um, of the Cats and Dogs team, um, where she does get a little bit um, personal, but it's it's a good it's a good healing episode. So make sure to tune in and listen to that. Um, you Dang. once again, um, shout I out make to an appearance on Cats and Dogs one day. You should. Didn't you do an episode already? That was yeah. like six years ago. That don't count. Oh, that was the pilot episode. Yeah. Um, shout out to once again your sports under the Java Tears Network, and shout outs to Peter Rosado for joining the squad. Um, we welcome you with open arms. So we're glad to see a new member. Um, on yeah, the I'm team. Indie wrestling. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but and then I really miss indie wrestling. Yes, I mean, hopefully soon. You know, 2021. Listen, we're gonna make I some miss moves. Screaming at people in the ring. I know you suck. miss cheering on your friends. Oh I man, know. prolific. Oh I man, know. the Yaya Jout here South. Know. You know. So yeah, man. so Cats and Dogs, you're a sports, and once again, Talk of Champions, all under the Jabba Tears Podcast Network. So make sure to subscribe and follow to all the YouTube and Instagram pages. But once again, you can always subscribe to our YouTube page, over a thousand subscribers, um, the Jabba Tears Podcast. So super proud of that. Um, as always, I'm Janelle from HR here with Sir Wilkins and Mr. Black. Hashtag Black Excellence. Hashtag We Are Out. Job is over, got the hands in motion If you go with rolling, no need to focus Traveling states and over oceans You gotta wait till your coast's chosen Trying to have lines outside the show Like every part of releases at Barnes and Noble